other kind of black hole is more interesting, Kerr black hole, because this one we might be able to use one day to do time travel or space travel, whichever one we want, okay? This is known as a Kerr black hole. The, this one is a rotating black hole. Well, just like we expect a lot of neutron stars to rotate and become pulsars, we would expect a lot of black holes to not be stationary. We would expect them to rotate. So it's very common that we would expect this kind of black hole even more, uh, probably even more common than the stationary black hole, okay? This is known as Kerr black hole. The rotating black holes proposed by Roy Kerr in 1963. Physical features. So they look something like this. I've drawn so many times over this so that uh, you have drawings and drawings. So let's draw clean here. So the singularity at the center, instead of being a point singularity, it looks like a ring, like that. That's the singularity. Then there's the event horizon. See, to escape from this inner region, you got to go faster than the speed of light. That's the event horizon. Then there's an outer region. And the space between them is called ergosphere. And then the black hole is spinning this way. So it's spinning like that. Okay, so physical features, ring singularity, inner Cauchy event horizon where the escape velocity is faster than the speed of light. That's this dark one. Outer event horizon, that's oval shape. You see here, oval. It's not uh, spherical. And the ergosphere is the region in between the two horizons where it's actually possible to escape, you see? So it's um, between the two horizons where the escape velocity is, is less than the speed of light. So you, if you go in there, you could escape it, but you just got to go very fast. And this is gray. In other words, gray picture is this one. So this is the dark one. This one is the dark one here. This one you can't escape, but the outer one you, you could escape. Let's see here what this picture shows. Similar idea here. See here, ergo region. They're showing you kind of from an inside view. Here's the singularity. It's a ring like that. And you got the inner event horizon and then the outer one, okay? These are the ones that a lot of people speculate that you could use as space travel or time travel. So, therefore, it is possible to escape out of the ergosphere if one goes fast enough. Two ways of doing time travel. This is probably two of many ways. There's probably lots more out there that you can read on, and it gets very, very science fiction-y, some of them. But at the core, the, the equations of physics and the equations of general relativity do allow time travel, do allow for uh, these things called wormholes and uh, uh, you know, black holes and stuff like that. But it's whether or not we're going to actually be able to do that, that's a different question. You know, so we're uh, at the way that the at the way that the technology is accelerating. I wouldn't be surprised if thousand years later we're probably doing that. You know, um, so navigate from the top or bottom of a curved black hole and go through the ring singularity, go through the ergosphere and rotate around a couple of times. Avoid the inner horizon and come out. The second one is basically saying. Come like this, maybe with your rocket, and try, try to avoid the inner part. Enter the, this region. So imagine your rocket is coming like this. And then start going around it very, very fast. You got to go close to the speed of the light, but not, you don't have to go faster than the speed of light. So you got to go like this, go around, come around, come around, come around, and maybe go around 10 times or 100 times or whatever and then build up enough speed, and then come out. And then when you come out, where will you be? 
Well, those are all questions that we don't know yet. Are you going to be in a different time or are you going to be in a different space? Are you going to come back in the past? Are you going to go in the future? Those are all questions to be answered. So there's one way. The other one, the number one, is to say this. This is maybe more risky. Okay? Go from the this way or this way. Let's say, imagine this is your rocket. Okay, you go, ready guys? You have uh, 10 of you in the rocket. Ready? Here we go. You go right through, right through, and then you go through the ring singularity. Okay? What's out there? Now, if you try to do that to a stationary black hole, what's going to happen? The stationary one. Yeah, you're going to be stretched. Well, you're going to be also be stretched here, but the problem with this one, you're going to get stretched and you're going to hit a point. You just hit a point and you crash and you die, dead end. You see? You can't do that to a stationary black hole. But with this one, you also get stretched. So you have to, uh, for sure, you have to have a strong rocket to be able to withstand the he tidal heating. Okay? But the, the, the interesting thing is that it's not a point. It's not a dead end. So what's, what's beyond that point? Okay, here is where the concept of a wormhole comes. It's speculated that when you go through this ring singularity, it acts as a tunnel. You see this thing? It acts like a tunnel. And this tunnel is known as a wormhole. So it's speculated, and the equations of physics support this, that when you go through the ring, you're actually going to enter this tunnel, okay? You got to do it very, uh, very, very carefully. You can't hit the sides of the tunnel because it'll, it'll squeeze you to death, okay? You have to make sure you have something known as negative energy to keep the tunnel from closing in on you, okay? And you got to go through that tunnel, the wormhole. And then on the other side of this wormhole, what's speculated to exist? Something the opposite of a black hole, okay? Something opposite to a black hole. What's opposite to a black hole? White hole. What's the difference between a white hole and a black hole? Black hole sucks you in, you can't come out. White hole spits you out, you can't go back in. Okay? So it's kind of very uh, science fiction-y. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but, you know, physics supports this. So you go in, you come out through the wormhole, you come out the white hole. Okay, now here comes issues that you have to grapple with, you have to struggle with. When you come out, where do you come out? Do you come out in the present, but at another location? That would be called what kind of travel? Let's say my cousin is holding a birthday party in the Andromeda galaxy right now. I don't want to travel in the future. I don't want to go back in the past. He's holding the birthday right now. I want to do space travel, okay? Or maybe he's in Jupiter or he's in a, a different galaxy cluster altogether. So there's something known as just space travel. So I design a wormhole, a black hole. I go in, I spit out the white hole then I'm there, present but at another galaxy. I'm there with my friend, I'm able to celebrate the birthday. Then there's got to be another black hole where he's living, so I can go into the black hole and then spits me out the white hole and then I come back here to Earth. Is this sounding very interesting, crazy or doable? What do you guys think? Okay, now another kind of travel is, let's say you come out in the year 200,000 AD. So you, you go inside of a black hole, you come out a white hole, and you come out, and it's the Earth. It's still the Earth, but now you're in the future of the Earth. What kind of travel is this? Time travel into the future. Okay? Have you guys read Time Machine by H.G. Wells? Pretty interesting. There's a movie too, right? With... Uh, like that, a time travel, a time machine. So you go into the future, and you can do whatever you're doing, you know, but then you need to return back. 
So you need another kind of black hole with a white hole. Go enter that, that future and then come back to the present, okay? Now, another kind of thing is you come out 1500 AD. What is that kind of travel? Time travel also, but into the past. Now, there's a theory that maybe that's not doable because time machines weren't invented in 1500. You can only go back, they say, to the first time when a time machine was invented. So since 1500, the time machine wasn't invented, that's probably not doable, okay? Maybe that's debatable, but uh, I believe that is not doable. So let's just say today we invented a time machine and then a thousand years later someone wants to come back to today, then that's doable, you see? But if you go try to go back to 1500, something prevents you because time machines weren't uh, invented then, okay? But here is the tricky thing. Let's say a thousand years later somebody uh, wants to go come back to the present. Let's say time machine was invented now. They want to come back to now and they want to change the history. Can they do that? Okay, then you start getting into uh, time paradoxes. These are known as time travel paradoxes. Can you go into the past, change history? Can you try to go prevent Hitler from killing the Jews? Can you try to go prevent uh, historical things from ever happening? Can you go in the past, try to kill your own grandfather? This is known as the grandfather paradox. What will happen to you? Okay, read up on that. Very interesting, grandfather paradox. Can you kill your own grandfather? Well, the instant you kill them, are you gonna disappear? Or are you now gonna end up in a parallel universe where your grandfather doesn't exist, but you exist? You know, that's called a parallel universe. Here's the, here's the very interesting thing. Even if you try to come back to the present, maybe you won't come back to our own present Earth. You come back to a copy of our Earth. I, I like the ending of the movie Planet of the Apes. Remember, they went into the future and uh, this most recent one in 2000 something, right? Um, they went into the future, they fought the apes and all of that, and then they came back to the present. What happened when they came back to the present? I think they ended up in Washington, D.C. somewhere. If you haven't seen the movie, I'm ruining it for you, but um, they end up in Washington, D.C. somewhere, and then the cops come in to help them out, right? When the cops get out, what are they? Apes. And then the very next thing you see is the statue of Abraham Lincoln. What is it? What is Abraham Lincoln? Huh? An ape. So what is that ending of that movie telling you? It's telling you even if you can do time travel, be careful how you come back. Okay? If you think you're coming back to the earth, you might come back to a copy of the earth. And that copy of the earth is in a parallel universe and the apes are the ones that are ruling. The people are the slaves. They're in zoos. They're kept in zoos, you know. And so Abraham Lincoln in that copy is an ape. I know I got way, way into this science fiction, but I love that stuff. Um, okay. Oh, I have a couple of pictures to show you too. Um, let me... I'm gonna come back to this, you see here? This is uh, another picture here, you see here? Imagine Earth, you wanna go to your cousin's birthday which is held in Alpha Centauri. If you try to go through space, you would have to go that far. It's gonna take you millions of years to get to Alpha Centauri. 20 million million miles to Alpha Centauri. So you can't do that regular, you can't do that with a regular speed. So you design a black hole and a wormhole, and a white hole. You get in there, you go, and then you celebrate the birthday, then you come back, and you, you can do your stuff, okay? So this is one way of envisioning that. This is another one, general relativity, wormhole tunnels by inertial drag, Morris and Thorne, 1988, a jump through hyperspace. So you see, you require uh, a ring singularity, a rocket is entering here, this is the wormhole, and uh, Actually, the rocket is entering here, you see this way? Then it's coming out this end. So you have a jump through hyperspace, requires ring at each end, rotating near speed C, highly charged, ultra dense. So this is the black hole. 
This is the white hole. This is an interesting one I found. So there's an event A being held here, Olympic Games on Earth. You see, here. And then they get into wormhole, they go, and then in Alpha Centauri, there's a Congress being held. And then they get in the wormhole, and then they come back. They get back before they ever left. Okay? So it says here, uh, a space traveler could uh, use a wormhole which is stationary with respect to Earth as a shortcut to get from event A to B and then come back through a moving wormhole. This mo uh, wormhole is actually moving. Come back through a moving wormhole and return to Earth before he ever set out. So you could go do your thing and then you come back. It's, nev it's like you never were gone. Okay? So... This is stuff you can look into later on. I just tried to give you as much as I could in the limited time. This is all cool, cool, cool stuff. Okay. Um, now, are the, these black holes just simply theory, or can we discover them? And the answer is yes. There are ways to discover them.